They say it's good for Notre Dame, but is it good for college football? Hey again, everyone. Appreciate you stopping by right here at the Voice of College Football, the best in discussion, debate, and analysis. Please give us a like and subscribe. Notre Dame independence. That topic is back on the table. Notre Dame Athletic Director Pete Bavacqua just took over the role from Jack Swarbrick and spoke with ESPN this week. We will review what uh, Pavacqua had to say and our take on Notre Dame independence, why they are independent, and why they shouldn't be. This article released by Heather Dinich of ESPN on Thursday reads, While college athletics undergo sweeping changes, Notre Dame's desire to remain independent is constant. As Notre Dame leadership feels, quote, as secure as ever in its football status, first-year athletic director Pete Bavacqua told ESPN. Bavacqua, as we noted, taking over for Swarbrick, said the university's most recent television deal with NBC, its partnership with the ACC for all other sports except hockey and the new college football playoff deal, all provide financial security. He also said he's, quote, bullish on the future of the football program as Coach Marcus Freeman enters his third season. We are now in as good of a position as we've ever been in the modern era of college football to be independent, said Bavacqua, a 1993 Notre Dame graduate. And Notre Dame, by the way, you need to hang a banner for 1993. Fight for that national championship. Same record as Florida State. You beat them head to head. Hang the banner. Bavacqua returned to the school in 2023 in an administrative role after serving as the third chairman in the history of NBC Sports. We see the connection there. Quote, you see all the conference realignment and you see everything that's happened. I think our position as being independent in football, quite frankly, is certainly more unique than ever, but also more valuable than ever. More unique than ever, Bavacqua speaks the truth. Go back to the early 1990s. Florida State, South Carolina, Louisville, Penn State, Maryland, Syracuse, Boston College. We could go on all independent football schools. So it's Notre Dame and nobody else. Nobody else matters that is currently independent. And anyone who is independent currently, and we'll talk about those schools in just a minute, don't want to be independent. They had situations arise in which they were booted out of conferences. So Notre Dame's independent status certainly is unique and it builds its brand and keeps them unique in the world of college football. If they can't be relevant on the field from a championship standpoint, they certainly have been unique and that unique brand has been even more distinct in recent years. According to sources in the new six-year CFP agreement, which begins in 2026, Notre Dame has the potential to earn roughly $18 million annually, which would significantly elevate the program closer, which would significantly elevate the program closer to what the Big Ten and SEC schools will be making, more than $21 million. It would also boost the Irish ahead of the ACC and Big 12 schools. Starting in 2026, Notre Dame is expected to get more than $12 million from CFP revenue distribution, which is in the same ballpark as ACC schools, $13 million, and Big 12 schools, $12 million each. Bavacqua declined to comment on the CFP revenue agreements, but industry sources told ESPN there will also be a $6 million financial incentive for any independent team that reaches the CFP what should typically be a source of additional revenue for the Irish because Notre Dame has access protections built into the new CFP contract that will survive regardless of whether the ultimate format includes 12 or 14 teams. Access protections, I gotta have that defined for me. It's very vague here. If that simply means that going forward, regardless of what happens to the realignment in college football, what ever happens with the playoff model of 12, 14, 16 teams that Notre Dame will remain as a power team, meaning power five, now power four, could be down to power three, power two, eventually with the SEC and the Big Ten. I have no issue with that. However, if we're talking about some type of reserved status, like Notre Dame was able to broker with the Bull Coalition and the other BCS formats from the 1990s forward where a 
top 15 finish, a top 12 finish, a nine win team automatically pushed somebody else out. I just don't want to see any favoritism given to Notre Dame. Leave it up to the college football playoff selection committee to review the candidates just like they do with everyone else. If Oregon State and Washington State don't join a conference by then, they would also be eligible for the additional $6 million, along with UConn, which is the only other independent school remaining. There will no longer be a participation bonus for any of the conferences. Again, let's understand, Washington State and Oregon State didn't want this situation. They were fine in the Pac-12 being members of a conference. They have been thrust into nowhere land and just trying to hook up with the Mountain West Conference for a couple seasons, see how it goes, test the waters, and see where the landscape of college football goes from there. In terms of UConn, of course, they've been a member of the Big East, the American Conference, and they would like to be part of a conference as well, I'm sure. Not Notre Dame. Do not lump them in with those other three schools. Quote, our dollar figure that's derived from the CFP for us is quite strong. You think? Plus the fact that we have the ability to earn additional revenue in the instances where we make the CFP, which puts us in an even stronger position, Babak was said. So when you step back and look at the totality of those three elements, the NBC relationship, the ACC network relationship, and the CFP, we're in an incredibly strong position relative to the rest of the college sports world. This is where I take exception with the revenue distribution to Notre Dame. Okay, they are being treated like they belong to a conference. I don't care how bad the football program is that you cited places like Vanderbilt, Wake Forest, Indiana, so forth. They contribute to a conference. They are a member of a conference Therefore, they benefit from the membership. And even though it does not appear it to be the case on the football field, they contribute to the conference in so many ways, academically and otherwise. Notre Dame doesn't belong to a conference. Why do they get a cut of the revenue? A 3-9 and nine Notre Dame football team is going to get $12 million. You may say, well, Notre Dame draws eyeballs. Yes, they do during the regular season. And they are paid for that by NBC and the other television networks that air Notre Dame games. They are paid for their regular season performance. So why would a 3-9 and nine Notre Dame team receive college football playoff money and then have the incentive, like the other schools, which again did not ask for this situation, Notre Dame has demanded and been able to secure this situation because of their brand, because of their power. So you cannot compare them to the other schools and put them in the same category. They should be completely incentive driven. Otherwise, join a conference. But I will tell you in just a second why that has not happened and why it will not happen under the current system. With the Big Ten and SEC having separated from the other leagues in both size and wealth, the ACC entangled in lawsuits with Clemson and Florida State, questions continue to swirl about further realignment. Bavakwa said Notre Dame feels, quote, very strongly about its relationship with the ACC and Commissioner Jim Phillips, also a Notre Dame graduate. I didn't know Jim Phillips was a Notre Dame graduate. <laughs> that may tell us something right there. Quote, clearly like everybody else in the conference, we're certainly talking about FSU and Clemson with the conference and Jim Phillips, but we feel that the conference is in such great shape, <laughs> has a long-term relationship with ESPN, which is important, and has secured its very important inclusion in the CFP, like we have for the next eight years, Bavak was said. There's a lot of unbelievably great things going on for the ACC. And we value our relationship and being part of that conference in the overwhelming majority of our sports, with the two exceptions. Obviously, football and hockey. Obviously, we cannot be a football member. I used to know a lot about ACC basketball. Right now, I know nothing about ACC basketball except its history. I know absolutely nothing about the other varsity sports in the ACC, whether there's 15 or 50 
or how well they're doing. I know it's a decent lacrosse conference as well. You know what? Why I can speak to this? It doesn't matter. It only matters what's going on in football, and the ACC is in hot water. Notre Dame is the most valuable property remaining, and the ACC has not been shy in the past about courting the Irish as a full member, and the ACC had the chance in 2020. When COVID hit and every conference went into a shell and only scheduled conference games, Notre Dame needed a life jacket and the ACC was very ready and willing to throw out the life jacket, but with nothing in return except for a little bit of added revenue and having Notre Dame play more football games in 2020 in the ACC. What would have been apropos is if Notre Dame would have completely abused the ACC. They did financially. They did logistically. But if they could have just completed that 2020 ACC championship and after going 10-0 in the conference in the regular season, defeated Clemson and won the ACC and said, thank you very much. We show up for one season, abuse your league, and we're off. The ACC needed to get something back from Notre Dame for throwing them a life preserver. And that was signing a contract to play not just games against ACC opponents, but to play in the ACC as a football member. Quote, it's fundamentally important to Notre Dame to stay independent in football because it has allowed the school to position itself as a national university as it relates to football. Totally agree. Notre Dame fans, don't get this video wrong. Do not get my perspective wrong. If I was in charge at Notre Dame, I would be doing the same thing. This has nothing to do with Notre Dame. This has everything to do with the brokenness, the dysfunction of college football. Notre Dame is staying unique, and that's an important quality. If they can't win on the field, win big on the field, then this unique quality that nobody else has, we are independent You maintain the unique quality of that, the unique brand of Notre Dame football. Number two, you keep control. Who doesn't want to have control? You maintain control of your football property and everything that you do. You don't have to answer to 14, 15 other schools and a conference commissioner. You keep sovereignty. A lot of aspects within our society here in the United States might want to listen to that. You keep sovereignty. And they've got a sweet deal with the ACC. As confident as Bavakwa is in Freeman's future leading the Irish, he recognized the pressure to win to sustain that national brand and said, quote, there's an absolute need for us to win a national championship. That pressure has been on Notre Dame since Newt Rockney. That's not a pressure, quite frankly, we shy away from. That's a pressure we accept As a lifelong Notre Dame fan and alumnus, we thrive on that pressure. There's an understanding that Notre Dame football may be more than anywhere else in the country, certainly as much as anywhere else in the country, is part of the DNA of this university. We know that is a key priority of ours, he said, not only to stay relevant, but quite frankly, to win a national championship and be the best. Did Bavakwa just say that Notre Dame needs to win a national championship to be the best? Well, of course, that is the definition of the best for that particular year, the national championship. But to have to win a national championship to stay relevant? Wow. Bavakwa, Freeman, administration, coaching staff, everybody at Notre Dame better deliver or else he's going to have to walk back that statement. If Notre Dame does not win a national championship in the next five years, are they irrelevant? Well, according to that statement, yes. And finally, this is why Notre Dame is independent. I just laid it out for you, their incentive to stay independent. And I would do the same thing. Absolutely, that serves Notre Dame completely. However, is it good for college football? No. This is not 1990 when there were 15 to 20 major schools as independents and there was not a college football playoff in which we had to measure and evaluate teams fairly and using the same system 
to uh, evaluate and enter those teams into a playoff, select them as we still will going forward with a 12 or 14 team playoff. However, it's not going to happen. Notre Dame is going to continue to get its way. Why? Because there is no commissioner of college football. There is no governing body of college football. The two conferences that are imposing their will ever so kindly, smartly, but very forcefully at the same time is, of course, the SEC and the Big Ten. Well, who would get Notre Dame? That's the problem. The SEC does not want Notre Dame in the Big Ten, and the Big Ten does not want Notre Dame in the SEC. Well, neither one of them want Notre Dame to fortify or build up the Big 12, and of course, Notre Dame would kick and scream about joining the Big 12 even more so than the two power conferences. So this is not going to happen. Notre Dame is going to get its way unless college football drastically changes, i.e. establish a commissioner or a governing body. Your thoughts down below about Notre Dame's independence and everything that I've stated. Please like and subscribe right here at the Voice of College Football. See you next time.